And this is like, I will not like touch on everything that we did uh, over the last year or, or so, or, or many years actually of this data, but uh, I'll just touch on two uh, topics that we just finished and we are anticipating to start uh, in terms of our research for managing uh, forage pests in Arizona. So this is here mostly like the, um, the, the, the research and the activities that we are involving in. You can see that first two, this is the two that we are going to uh, discuss in a little bit of details today, the management option for sugarcane aphids in forage sorghum and the management of an insect that we just in the season with alfalfa weevil and now we have some data for it. We have also conducted some research uh, on the control option for alfalfa aphid and management of uh, some of the summer insect pests uh, of alfalfa like the uh, uh, caterpillar and some of the alfalfa hopper uh, as well as the spider mite in silage corn and root rot in alfalfa using uh, flow dry fall or uh, top coat. But we will discuss just for the sake of the time today, we will discuss only the first two topics about sugarcane aphid and uh, alfalfa weevil. Uh, for the management option of uh, sugarcane aphids, so far, like we, we, we have, our option is quite limited to the chemical control. We know that we have a whole array of natural enemies that they are uh, contributing to the management of these insects. Um, in some area where you can get a good monsoon, you can find some entomopathogenic fungi, but uh, giving the reproductive potential of these aphids it's quite hard to rely on any uh, biological control only. So it is more of uh, the, the chemical approach that we, we have been studied over the last few years. Uh, okay, so this is here the sugarcane aphid. We know this slide by now, it's like the yellow color, the dark of the uh, color of cornicles, the tips of the um, of the legs. And we can confuse it with two other um, uh, aphids, especially early in the season, like the corn leaf aphid, which is like more darker in terms of like the legs and the, um, the head and the first uh, segment of the thorax. And the green bugs, which is like a little bit different, bigger in size, uh, of long in shape, and uh, a little bit different pale in color compared to the sugarcane aphid. Uh, one of the things or one of the um, uh, approaches of managing uh, sugarcane aphid is uh, early planting. And we have some uh, data and some trials that suggest early planting was quite good in terms of uh, escaping this, uh, the population of this insect, which is like mostly um, appear in our field in August, like we are talking mid to third week of August. And here, one of our data that showed that we almost don't have any of the sugarcane aphid uh, in one of these trials. And it appeared like in two other trials have the same results. Only we have early season uh, green bugs and corn leaf aphid, and they are not um, accumulate or like making uh, much damage early in the season. And we don't need to uh, go after them with any kind of uh, control measurements. Uh, another thing that we did in terms of the uh, chemical uh, control of sugarcane aphid is the foliar application. And we did that like many years since 2016 until like this year, and we are working on uh, our trial this year. Uh, but foliar application also we used a lot of uh, chemical, available chemical. We, we, we are lucky that we have some selective chemistries for this. Uh, for these aphids that can manage them. Uh, I, I will share with you like a couple of these years, uh, one of them that I shared with you before 2018, this one here, this is the, uh, uh, some of the population, sugarcane aphid population uh, accumulated uh, number in 2018 for the foliar application effect trial that we con conducted at MAC. And as you can see, we have here uh, a group of these uh, chemicals here, like Centric, Transform, Cevento. We have like two rates for each of this one, and we have dimethyl weight and the untreated check. 
each color here, the blue, the red, the green, and purple is uh, representing one of the sampling days. We followed the application by weekly, almost weekly sampling uh, uh, the uh, uh, data from uh, this location and these trials. So, and as you can see, like, some, some chemicals like the, the, the thymus weight, although it can work on other aphids like alfalfa aphids, but here with sugarcane aphid is not working at all. And we have like different uh, in terms of the efficacies of uh, the other chemistries that we have. So for Cevanto, it's like the, the higher rate is working better than the lower rate. Uh, uh, transform almost the two rates are in the middle and here they are almost identical. And we have centric and both of these two rates of centric in 2018 was working almost the same without uh, sig much significant differences here. This is here like something I would like to bring your attention to. In 2018, we have this data here because in 2020, when we have like almost the same uh, regimen of uh, uh, application, we, we have a little bit of different results. And this year we are trying to find out whether this change that we saw uh, in 2020 uh, would be anything that will continue in uh, 2021. So here is like our um, result here from 20, I'm sorry, from 2021. And you can see like the, the two rate of centric is not doing good as they did in, two, in 2018. And, Quite frankly, I don't know what went here or what was the reason for that. But we have like uh, uh, the rest of other uh, products are working quite good in minimizing the population uh, to a very good level, especially like here the, the uh, transform, the two rates of Sibanto and uh, Safina at six times. So that's, that's what we have in 2020. And these two years, we have the data, uh, these, these data are for the foliar application. Another technique that we are using, and it is now, I think, in some stage of getting approval, and we will know that from uh, our uh, bear representative la later on today, is the uh, infra application uh, of this uh, of this chemical, uh, which is uh, um, Cevanta. And in 2018. Uh, we, we, we have these chemicals here or this uh, regime of chemicals that you use. We have the untreated check. And then we have like uh, two um, groups of the uh, injection of Cevanto. And 2018, we used like Cevanto uh, Prime. So we have the eight ounce as an injection, four ounces as an injection, and two ounces of Cevanto, all of these three as an injection. And we have another group when we have the same three rates of Cebanto as an injection plus a foliar application of centric when the population appears in the trial. And we have like one check, which is like the only the centric at 2.5 uh, ounce per acre as foliar application and the untreated check. And this is the result here of 2018. And you can see like the, the, the combination of uh, uh, the injection and for injection of the seeds plus centric and also like even the injection alone of Cevanto are cutting the population quite low, like almost below uh, 60 or 50 and even like less than that as a cumulative number in many cases. here. So it, it, it did quite good. Uh, and it, it showed also in uh, uh, the yield here. And you can see like the yield here in the group that has the injection is quite significant compared to uh, the foliar only or uh, the lower rate of the injection. In 2020, also we have uh, the same uh, infero injection uh, uh, application and a similar uh, results with a little bit of different population because we have higher population in 2020. Uh, you will get like the, the group that has the injection are having this population of sugarcane aphid uh, at check. And we have like two uh, foliar application and the comparison between the injection and foliar application alone, uh, I'm sorry, and injection alone and injection plus foliar is significantly different here. So we have this like uh, 
one method, which is like the foliar, which is now um, uh, registered for uh, sugarcane aphid, and we have uh, the inferno injection, which is like in the in the uh, pipeline in the work for being um, approved. And the thing is, this is our here more of our, our, our option for our grower and, and PCA because some can say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for the population to appear and then I will deal with it as a foliar application. And some other will say, no, I will just, you know, get an insurance and we'll do the injection once it's approved, it's not approved yet. So this is here, we are a little bit ahead of the game to give some of these uh, data in terms of the inferno injection, as well as uh, provide uh, information on the foliar application uh, to help with management of these things. So uh, with that, we'll move on to the uh, the other uh, insects that we dealt with during the uh, spring and winter time, the uh, alfalfa weevil. And for, for many years, we have problem with the alfalfa weevil, especially uh, the economic thresholds for it and whether it is like the old one that was uh, 15 to 20, many of, of you didn't use it because it's not working and it caused a lot of damage to follow that. And we did, you know, multi-year studies part of uh, Kyle Harrington's PhD now. And we found a very strong relationship between the larval population, especially like large larva and the yield. And from that and over the years, the, 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 the relationship, as, as you can see, is quite steep and strong. And this relationship led us to, uh, especially, like I said, between the large larva here, this is like the large larva, very distinct dorsal or like the back line here compared to the smaller one here or any other insect that you can find in your sweep net like hopper or aphid or anything else. So this is here the large larva that we based our uh, economic threshold on. And we have like a, a calculator or like a, a little app that you can use. This is here the, the link to this app here. And I just like had a snapshot of this app here. You can see we have a bar here. This is with, with this circle, you can like slide this circle and it will give you uh, uh, the uh, value of the crop in terms of dollar per ton. That's what you should expect here in, on this uh, first line. Here. The, the, the second one here would be like the cost of treatment if you have uh, or if you need to uh, treat for these uh, insects. And then you will go to your field, you will have your five sweeps in, in each quar uh, quadrant of your field and get your uh, mass to get how many uh, uh, large lar large larva, as we said, per sweep that you get. And based on this example here, if we have like a $200 value per ton for, uh, for the hay, and the cost of treatment is about $29 per acre, and that's, you know, include everything from chemicals to uh, labor, uh, fuel, and everything, you will need, or, uh, your average should be 2.5 large larva per 180 degree sweep. That's when you get this kind of uh, information. And as I said, this is here, the uh, link for this uh, calculator and it's quite helpful. And we used it like many times with many of our PCA and it was, it was really uh, informative and good to work with. Uh, other things that also we, we are doing every year and we would like to share with you also this year is efficacy trials for uh, treatment for uh, alfalfa weevil. Uh, this year we used, uh, I think, almost a dozen or more or of uh, different uh, treatments. Some of these chemicals, as you see, were replicated. So we have like uh, uh, some uh, groups, different group of chemicals here. Uh, and this is the list here that you have. And you will see that we have like UA2021, A, P, and C. And this is a new uh, product that we are testing. We are testing it blindly. So. Uh, there is not much information about it, but we are using it at one, 1.5 and two ounce uh, per acre. And this is uh, uh, one of the top things that we are doing with this, uh, uh, with this insect here, because most of our, our chemistries that we are using uh, is a little bit old, but we have some of them that is 
uh, could be like used even as organic, like delegate and uh, some others. And we have also the new one. So I will share with you the population uh, of this trial that we have for 2021. And this is here like an overall mean number of the alfalfa weevil large larva. This is here the large larva that we uh, based our uh, our threshold on it. And as you can see, like compared to the untreated check, all all the treatment having like lower lowered the population of uh, this larva uh, significantly compared to the untreated check. There are some different, as you can see, between and among these uh, these chemistries here, and you can see also there is differences between or among the same product, but with different traits. But you know some of the chemistries that we we have them as our like um, you know standard like warrior to lower the population quite significantly. We have the new product here at the three rate. They are doing quite good. Some of the uh, product that have in combination of organophosphate and uh, uh, pyrethroid, they are also doing good. Some uh, like Stewart and Turak with uh, or without uh, some of the adjuvant, they are working also quite good. So we have, you know, uh, delegate, which is like quite soft here, is also doing uh, uh, quite good, especially with the uh, uh, lower and intermediate trade. So we have, you know, a whole regime of, uh, chemicals here that we can use for this insect. And it is quite important because uh, we have here now like a new threshold that is uh, a little bit lower, not a little, a lot lower than the previous uh, one. And we have also some um, serious talk about resistance. And with that, we need to find out what's going on and what is our tools here and how we will use them wisely. So. In terms of the uh, the threshold, we found like in, in, in mini trial, it was started in 2018 and we did it in 2019 and 20, we found that going early is way better than going late. So this is here like two example when we have our early season insecticide treatment, when we found the uh, larva there and we, we, we have maybe like about one average of one large larva per, uh, per sweep and for like 45 days, that's the whole cycle of this uh, before we cut, we, we were like managing this insect uh, alfalfa weevil very, very good under, under like many of the chemistry that we can use. On another trial, we just let it go. We just let the population go and we like started with a little bit, you know, over eight or nine large larva per sweep. The insecticide did, some good work, yes, but we have, we are still like accumulatively, we still have a lot of these larger in the field and they are feeding on the crop and they are reducing the yield. So the, the message here is just to go, uh, when you detect this larva, when you are within the threshold and our threshold here is, is just between two uh, to four or five of large larva based on the, the price or the value of the hay that you are expecting. Why you are saying that? Because it, it, it like the last couple of years, it was like quite common to get something like that. This is only like some of the, uh, the alfalfa weeds and larvae that I collected uh, at Hills River. And this is the date here. It was like March 9, 2020. That's maybe one of the last in person meeting <laughs> just before we. Uh, we had the pandemic and we went virtual. And this is like a lot of a lot of larva. I counted 189 per five sweeps. That's an average of 37.8 per, per sweep. And that was in, in one field uh, just across the Colorado River. And uh, uh, there is a lot of talk in this area and also in the northern part of the Western state about uh, some resistance and especially resistance to uh, pyrethroids and like for warrior as well. So with that, we, we conducted also some experiment to find out whether in our area here in, in Arizona and even like other state, whether we have any resistance uh, for, uh, for this. Uh, for this. And it's mainly because we have like very limited active groups here or active um, ingredients 
for this insect. We have like the pyrethroid and we have some examples for them here. We have index, index carb, which is like steward. We have the organo uh, phosphate like uh, chlopyrifos and in some states, Western states, it's like facing out. We have some spinosis like the entrust and delegate. And we also like have a group that uh, a group of, of peptides of uh, spear biological. Uh, it's not like used that much, but we are now investigating whether we want to like uh, see their impact on uh, al uh, on alfalfa weevil larvae. So if we if we found out that we have like some of or one of these groups is not working good, that will lower our uh, options here. So uh, we were monitoring the resistance of uh, one of the pyrethroids that is widely used in alfalfa uh, in the western state here, which is like uh, uh, Lambda Thialastrin or Warrior 2. And we did that in many parts, many uh, uh, production area in Arizona, as well as California and some other uh, states like uh, Utah, New Mexico, Montana, Oklahoma, and Texas. And we did the assay based on like the uh, feeding uh, assay using like the, uh, the leaves that uh, alfalfa leaflet in the lab. And our result like overall, it wasn't, it wasn't bad here, like the 500 parts per million and even like the 250, they are still like doing this in job after 48 hours, close to 90% uh, mortality. But when we like the, 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 uh, dissect these results and go like side by side, it's a little bit of busy here uh, uh, chart, but you can see like we have some location here, mostly like in Arizona, where like most or all of the uh, the three uh, the, the rates here are going you know close to 100 percent mortality that's a good sign that's what we want to see for any probe but we have some other location like in like here Eureka in northern california where like we have a lot of trouble here because we have uh, less than like 40 percent mortality uh, in some of the uh, median rate here which is close to the field rate. similar thing here in in one part of texas and also in flies, which is like very close, very similar to our condition here in the low desert in Arizona. That's especially here, and also some of the news that we have during uh, the last couple of years is troubling because this could be our future. Our efficacy, as I show you, as I show you, is showing that we have, we still have uh, our this product like Warrior and other product are working quite good in our area, but. This like three scenarios here could be our future if we weren't a good steward of uh, the use of this chemistry. We have like, you know, all of these products, if you look at them, they are only like three uh, or, or, or four of this uh, group according to the Iraq system here. We can promote resistance quite easily if we didn't use some of these chemical wise. So some of the, the scenarios that we can promote this resistant is to use the same, you know, group of uh, uh, of insecticide, but they are different product. Like here, you can like use cold advanced to manage weevil. It has uh, the organophosphate, chlorpyrifos, and also you can use dimethoate. It's also organophosphate, and between the two, you can have some uh, cross resistance here. Another scenario: if you use one pyrethroid, like warrior for uh, the weevil, and you can use either warrior again or some other pyrethroid like pyrethroid XL for uh, weevil. You are here exposing the insect uh, more and more to the same because <clears throat> when you are using this product to target one insect, the field has also another insect that could be target for this, uh, for this product and that could encourage like uh, some of these and we can also have the cross resistance as well. It's, it's quite easy. You have this population here of the weevil. Some of them are resistant, some of them are not. And with non-selective insecticide that we apply, the only survivor will be the resistance one. And you know, after several generations and later on, we will have a whole field of resistance and it will be very, very hard to manage, uh, as you all see. So we want to like um, avoid this treat mill and we want to like keep our chemistry are work, uh, as working as good as they should be in our area. And with that, uh, I would like to thank all of the fun.
resources, all of the cooperator and technical assistance and students. And I'd like to thank you. And if you have any question, please uh, write them in the chat box and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. So I will need to invite our next speaker. Peter, Dr. Peter Ellsworth, and he will share with us some of the new technologies for managing uh, uh, one of the very uh, very important insects in cotton, like as bugs, and some other insects as well. And uh, the stage is Hi, man. Yeah. Can you can you turn on? Uh, give me your sharing. You are now. Okay, there we go. Let's see. 